So today we're checking out the EPQ by Canadian Solar. And this thing is massive. This is a 40 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And then on the top of each stack is a hybrid inverter. And these communicate with each other and run my entire home. And they also integrate with grid tie inverters and other hybrid inverters. So I have essentially created a microgrid. Now, typically on this channel, we do not cover these types of systems like the Tesla Powerwall Plus or these complete home backup batteries because they have proprietary batteries and they're not user serviceable. They have a warranty and if something goes wrong, you have to depend on the company. If you have a DIY system, you can use any battery that you wish. You can have multiple inverters connected to the same battery bank and it's very DIY friendly. So this is not for everyone, but it's really cool and I think you guys should consider it, especially for the price. The EP Cube for a complete home backup is like the cheapest in its class, but it has features that the other ones don't. It's not as cheap as a DIY system, but like I said, I think you guys might like it. I would say that this is the most DIY friendly one and we'll talk about why in a second. And for the channel, if we have DIY ground mount arrays or if I have a mobile array on top of a van or a truck or an RV, you can connect it to each individual one. So this one has four MPPTs and this one has four MPPTs as well. So I can run my whole house off of small mobile systems and it integrates with grid tie systems and hybrid systems that are on the other side of my property. So essentially I've created a microgrid at my house. So this connects next to all of my other systems. And you can also get it installed by a professional. So whether you wanna DIY it or get some electrician to install it, you can do it legally and you can do it in all 50 states. So I think it might actually be pretty popular for some of you guys, but it's not like a budget system like our other ones. So this does cost more, but I think it's the lowest cost one with these kinds of features. Now the installation is not that bad for a vertical mount lithium iron phosphate, because if you have a Power Pro or a Tesla Powerwall Plus, those things are 300 pounds and they're very hard to mount on a wall all by yourself. But with this system, you have modules that are 70 pounds each. So one person can actually install this entire system on their own. And this is a high voltage battery for efficiency. With this entire stack, this actually runs at 240 volts DC. Now these batteries are heavy, so you have to use these large brackets. And the first bracket actually connects to this shelf, and then you stack the batteries on top of this shelf. It's pretty easy to stack the batteries, but mounting these brackets can be quite difficult. It does come with a template, but a lot of the installers that I talk to actually like to do them one at a time. So they mount the battery and the bracket on the wall, they mark it, and then they remove the battery, they mount the bracket and then they put the battery back on. Or you can use the template, it's up to you. Now on top we have the inverter and the solar charge controller. So this is where you connect your solar panels and this is what connects to the gateway. And I'm gonna show you the gateway. The gateway connects everything. It connects the grid to your panel and to these and also EV chargers and other grid tie inverters. So we'll get to that in a second. But this was pretty hard to mount because it's so high up and it's pretty darn heavy. Now on each stack of batteries we have a fuse and this is rated for 700 volts and then we have two rapid shutdowns. This is for MPPT 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So we have four strings that can connect to this one. So with two units we can actually connect eight strings of solar panels. Now we're going to remove this cover. Okay, very dangerous. You do not want to touch anything in here, especially the high voltage DC. But over here we have the communication cables and this is CAN bus. And it has Tygo rapid shutdown built in. And this is what connects to the gateway. So if you're using it as an AC coupled battery like I am, this is where you connect it to your system. And then this block down here is for connecting your solar panels. And over here is where the batteries connect. And there's a plug like this on every single battery when you stack it up. 
Now the batteries connect to the gateway and this thing is the most important part of this system. This is the brain and this is what goes between your meter and your panel. Also, it serves as a sub panel and you can connect loads in grid tie inverters and you can actually monitor them. So these grid tie inverters over here that are made by Delta, they actually connect to this and I monitor it on the EP Cube app. Also, we have an EV charger that's also connected and monitored by the EP Cube system. And whether you have one battery or two or six, they all connect to this. Now be very careful when you work on this because there's some massive bus bars and you could have some serious uh, short circuits. So very dangerous, you do not want to touch anything. We have these massive bus bars right here, a huge contactor and they're CTs. This is how we monitor how much power is going to the grid tie inverters and the EV charger. And you can connect anything you want right here. And the output of this goes up to these circuit breakers and then out to the loads. And this is where the grid connects over here. And this is where your load center connects for your house. And this is the communication system that talks to the batteries through CAN bus through this cable right here. And this is the communication board for remote operation with the app. But pretty darn impressive. It makes me nervous having this much exposed conductor at that voltage next to my face, but this is the brains of the system and pretty darn impressive. I actually didn't recognize anything in here and I was like, hey, are you guys making this on your own? And they make this in-house. They designed and built this from the ground up. Now these grid tie inverters are monitored and controlled by the gateway, but it doesn't have to be connected there. You can still connect it to your load center and it will all work together. For example, in this system, we have an 18K and it's not connected to the gateway. It's connected to the load center. But when this detects that it's exporting, it will charge the batteries and it does it automatically. So you don't have to have it connected to this for it to work. You could have 10 um, grid tie inverters connected over there and it will still shoot that power over to the battery or the max amount that you can at its um, recommended charge rate. And then anything over that that's not being used will go out to the grid. And right now we're charging these batteries with the 18K and also with solar. So this system is all working together. I am capturing all of that energy that I'm creating with my other systems. Also, if you have a generator, you can connect it to the gateway. That's why there's contactors, voltage sensing leads, and CTs is specifically for using it with a generator. It will actually match the hybrid inverter's output to the generator's waveform so they can work together. Or you can use it with EV chargers or grid tie inverters. It's really up to you. Also, you can add loads without monitoring them. So you have quite a few. We have another spot that we could put a 240 volt load onto this panel with, but pretty versatile and pretty nice. So far, I haven't had any issues. Also, the monitoring updates in seconds. When I'm trying to figure out how much these are using, there's like a 10 minute delay. So it's really nice to see exactly what's happening at this moment. And that's pretty much it for the gateway. It's actually surprisingly simple. I know there's a lot of wires here, but but any electrician can set this up very easily and any DIY type person. You just cut some holes, add the conduit and then run your cables and you're done. Now let's put this cover back on because this thing is scaring me. I do not like this. Those bus bars just, oh, they creep me out, man. Also setting up your system for monitoring is very easy. I'm used to off-grid inverters that are quite a bit lower in cost and going up to something like this is really nice. It has step-by-step -step pictures and it tells you exactly what to do. Um, I really wish they could do that with the off-grid inverters, but maybe someday they'll get there. Even with the 6000 XP, like I think they could have designed that interface to be nicer, like I said in the previous videos. But yeah, this, this thing, I mean, you get what you pay for. When you spend a bit more, you get a really nice software interface that people have actually thought through and really, you know, thought about every possible use case scenario. It's hard to go back to the cheaper stuff when you try the nice stuff because it's really, really nice when it comes to solar, but yeah.
Now let's talk about the downsides. First off, if you have large air conditioners and you're running it directly off of this in off-grid mode, you're gonna have to install some soft starters. Um, I ordered mine and I'm gonna install it in both of my air conditioners. If you're running heat pumps with inverter circuits, then you don't have to. But if you have a traditional air conditioner, the condenser, that massive compressor, the startup surge can actually hurt these inverter circuits. So you're gonna have to install a soft start. Next on the app, when I'm charging these from the 18K, it doesn't show the kilowatts that are going into this. I just see the battery going up. I think that they need to add that. Um, if you're running it through the gateway and you have the monitoring enabled, then you can see how much power is going into the batteries. But I would like to see more information displayed on the batteries, that would be really nice. Also the voltage of the battery and how much power is going in and how long it will take to charge to full, that would be very useful and it's not in the app yet. Next, this is minor, but this cover is very flimsy. I wish they had a hard piece of plastic for covering up these boards instead. Next, I do not like this disconnect box and I think they need to develop their own product to make the installation easier for people with this configuration of meter and panel. This is not very common. This is pretty weird to have this configuration, but some people will still have it just like I do. So I think they should make their own box that connects the load center and the meter to the gateway. That would be really nice. That's pretty much all the downsides I've seen so far, but I've only had it for a few days. So in the next few months, when we connect our DIY solar arrays to the MPPTs in this, and I'm using it every single day, and these are mounted outside in Las Vegas, it gets ridiculously hot on this wall. So we'll be able to measure the degradation over time or if I encounter any software issues. So we'll see what happens in due time. But so far it's actually pretty impressive and I do like it, but we will see if we have any problems soon enough. So thank you so much for watching and I should probably get a Tesla Powerwall Plus next to all of these batteries and AC couple that so we have something to compare it to. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Working for National Geographic. Look at this. Come here. Look at that. And now we have here a praying mantis. Oh, praying mantis. That's sick, huh? <laughs> that is sick. <laughs>